Your project site is a dangerous place, and you need to be aware of the liabilities you have to your visitors, contractors and employees. The last thing you need is to be exposed to a lawsuit. Even though you may not be running the site, as an owner you still have certain responsibilities. Property owner's liability is a cut-down version of the full public liability that your contractor should hold. It provides cover for you as the owner of the property undergoing works and the site it sits on. It covers you before the contractor gets on site and for any liability not linked to the works. Property owner's liability presumes you're using a single contractor who controls the site and who employs the subcontractors used during the contract. Property owner's liability normally limits at £2 million for rural projects and £5 million with urban projects. It stands to reason that the opportunity for claims is increased when your project is surrounded by more people, so the indemnity limits should be higher. If you haven't engaged a main contractor, you need full project public liability insurance. Regardless of who runs the project, you or a project manager, you are still technically in charge of the site. Any liability claims are likely to be directed at you first and foremost. In the event of a claim, your insurers will respond first and then look to claim back any losses from subcontractors in due course. If you utilise labour-only subcontractors, you'll almost certainly need employer's liability insurance, which is compulsory in the UK. A tradesperson is usually defined as labour-only if they don't carry their own insurance, they work on a day or hourly rate, they don't provide their own materials, and they use simple tools. It's most likely that a labour-only subcontractor will be acting directly under yours or your project manager's direction. Consequently, in the eyes of the law, a master-servant relationship exists and the Employer's Liability Act applies. If you decide to dig down, perhaps creating or using a cellar, a subterranean space, your exposure increases dramatically. These types of work often require piling, shoring up and excavation. Party wall insurance only covers non-negligent works, it doesn't ensure when negligence can be clearly established. Before undertaking these complex operations, check your contractor's and your subcontractor's insurance to make sure these works are not excluded. The contractor's liability insurance should cover adjacent buildings as well as your own. Beware of the financial consequences of having to restore those buildings and rehousing the people living in them. Make sure that the limits chosen by your contractor seem realistic and ask them to increase their cover if the sum seems small. In London, indemnity levels can reach £10 million or more. The location of your project may have a bearing on the liability exposure perceived by your insurers. If your works include piling or drilling or the removal of asbestos, then pollution can be a problem too. CDM regulations normally kick in if your project will last more than 500 man days of construction work, in which case you need to notify the health and safety office closest to your project. You must determine if CDM applies to you. Again, if you have a single contractor for the entire project, then health and safety issues can be deferred to them. If you have more than one contractor, or you are managing the build, the responsibility will revert to you or your project manager. Be aware that the health and safety executive are not afraid to prosecute site operators that operate dangerous sites or cause death or serious injury through negligence.